girl. I'm Jen Parker. Welcome to the Hey Girl podcast. We're so excited you're here today. For this episode, I will be interviewing our girl, Bethany Needham. We thought it'd be super fun for you to hear us answer the interview questions. So we're going to dive right in. Hi, Bethany. Hi. So can you tell us about the specific season of life you're in right now? Absolutely. Well, this moment, I'm in the 15th take of this interview because it's been a little rough today. So I've been married to my husband 15 years. So we're honestly kind of in a fun season. Enjoy hanging out with him, being together, love going on dates. And our kids are a little older now. Mm -hmm. Not like old, but older. Mm -hmm. So our daughter is 11. Our son is 13. So it's that crazy time where you can like go out and do an errand and not have to get a babysitter i'm a little jealous right now i just need you to know that yeah it's it's surreal and so i got one kid that's like totally cool with that and the other one texts me every five minutes so (laughs) okay all right and i'm not gonna say which is which because i don't want to humiliate my older one (laughs) (laughs) but so that's kind of where we're at as a family so uh i work Mm full-time at my church as the youth director So definitely in a busy season of ministry Mm. and I love it. Like I love what I do. I love teenagers. I think they are the best. Um, And then kind of occasionally, usually sometime in the spring and fall, I get to do some traveling to different churches or retreats and speak at like women's conferences Mm. or girls conferences. And one of my favorite things that I get to do. So that's kind of where I'm at right now in life. It's it is a full season of life. For sure. <laughs> so break it down for me a little bit more. So what does like a typical day look like for you? Okay, so this question <laughs> is actually really hard to answer <laughs> because of the nature of what I do. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to give you, let's pretend that drama does not exist in the okay. world of youth ministry. And I'll go with a drama-free day. Okay. So I am an early riser. And by early, I'm talking right now, I think it's like 5.15, 5.30. And I am someone that like cup of coffee in the morning, my Bible, a journal. I've been doing this um, reading program in the morning. That's been awesome, reading through the Bible. And so that's my first hour and a half, two hours of the day. I am not chatty in the morning. So like I need that time. I don't Mm -hmm. want to talk. I just want to be with Jesus. Um, around seven, seven fifteen, it's time to throw on some clothes. Um, look semi presentable because I drive my daughter to school. My son at this point, he's already gotten on the bus, went off to middle school like a big kid. Um, but my daughter and I, we leave the house somewhere between seven thirty, seven forty, mm-hmm. and drive her to school. I love driving Mercy to school. Um, I was thinking as we were talking about you're praying on your way to school and I was like, wow, we have really shallow rides to school, (laughs) but Mercy and I's tradition is we jam out on the way to school. That's awesome. And so like on Monday morning, every Monday morning, we are cranking the mamas and the papas Monday, Mm -hmm. Monday. And I was so proud this morning when she was singing along, like it was just, it was a good day. That's awesome. So, um, after I drop off Mercy, I had one of two places right now, either my physical therapy office because I am broken and trying to be <laughs> fixed or straight to the office. Okay. Time out. <laughs> so tell our listeners why you have to go to PT and why you're broken <laughs> on the outside. Well, I guess on the inside, but on the outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is, I'm not going to give the whole story cause it's way too long, but the part you probably want me to confess is that while hiking in the woods alone, one day my dog came running and knocked my legs out from under me. Um, I don't know why you're laughing right now. <laughs> it was a really scary experience, Jen. <laughs> and it was one of those I landed the wrong, it was just the wrong angle. I happened to be on old, old pavement back in the woods. Like there used to be a road. I'm cringing just like thinking about it. I, yeah, I have a little PTSD. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Um, and so basically I fell really hard, dislocated my shoulder and tore up my elbow pretty good. And I guess in the process of doing that, I tore my labrum, um, which is a part of my shoulder. So long story short, it required surgery. So I had shoulder surgery. Um, 
which I am going to throw up there with like childbirth. Oh. It was incredibly painful shortly after, but I'm on the road to healing. It's just a long road. It's like a six month recovery. Well, you had this surgery in December, right? Oh yeah. I fell like last August. Like yeah. this has been a really a long, long road. road. It's been a humbling experience, yeah. Jen. Yeah. So that's my, some mornings I go, I love my physical therapy office. If you live in the Westboro area, Reliant Physical Therapy. I'm not kidding. It's like, massage that's what they do it's amazing um but then i go to the office so i work generally somewhere from like eight or nine until about three in the afternoon so office days for me can be meetings all day sometimes it's just like planning and prep for youth group it can be all sorts of things Mm -hmm. um but basically i'm at the church Mm -hmm. doing my church thing um and then around three I try and head back home so I can walk my dog in the woods because I don't learn lessons quickly. (laughs) Take her for a hike and then come home. And then it's like the family thing. The kids are home from school. Mm -hmm. Make sure homework's done. Um, Either I'm making dinner or Andy's making dinner or the best of all worlds, Andy's mom is making dinner. I know. You should be jealous. Um, And so have dinner. We usually have some family time after dinner. Our family loves games like board games or it's, yeah, it's our favorite thing. So after dinner, we'll do that a lot. And because we have big kids, they don't go to bed at seven anymore, Mm -hmm. which I just miss those days. Um, (laughs) But we do have them going to their rooms at eight, which is a miracle because one of them's a teenager. He's going to catch on real soon. Yeah. Nobody tell him who's listening to this. (laughs) Um, But they go up to the room. Then they can read or, like, finish up homework or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So that allows mommy to try and crawl into bed at a respectable hour, Mm -hmm. 9, sometimes 10. I'm really – once 10 hits, after that, I feel it the next day. Yeah. Yeah. My old lady stuff, like, kicks in around then. So I'm done for um, one thing you just mentioned that Andy's mom might cook dinner for you. So tell our listeners what your home situation looks like. Yeah. So we are, what do they call it? Three generational living right now. We bought this big old house a few years ago. Um, it's 1707, like total New England house. And we bought it with the purpose of having Andy's parents come and live with us. Um, it is not like an in-law suite kind of situation. Like they have bedroom, living room. We actually had a bathroom put in for them, but we share kitchen, dining room. Really the downstairs is pretty much shared space, but it's been awesome. Like Mm -hmm. his parents are great. His mom is super helpful. Um, and one of the things that we've kind of made a tradition of is on Tuesday nights, Um, Because Tuesday is one of my just crazy busy days. Um, And she makes dinner and Andy's brother and his wife and Mm. their kids come over and it's family dinner night. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so fun. I feel very like blue bloods. Like, yeah, I really enjoy Tuesday nights. So, and then she's also been great. Sometimes when Andy travels or he's at Berea and she knows like I've worked a long day She's all, oh, I have extra food. Like, let me feed you. And she just cooks way better than me. So (laughs) I'm like, yes, please. Or my kids are eating cereal again. So, yeah. Got you. All right. So it sounds like it's a pretty awesome season that you're in. But with any season, there's challenges. So what are some challenges of this season? Yeah. um, There's quite a few, to be honest. One of the things... For me, I would say, I think I always assumed when my kids got bigger, they would need me less. Mm. Like you just kind of have that idea, oh, you know, when my kids are Mm -hmm. like 11 and 13, then I'll get my life back and discover myself again, (laughs) or I don't know. (laughs) Um, And I'm just realizing like 11 and 13, like I feel like they need me Mm -hmm. more than ever, especially like emotionally Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of drama in like middle school and they just trying to figure out so much stuff. So for me, it's kind of discovering this new um, balance or flow in prioritizing when I do have a full-time job, but I also like my kids and my husband Mm -hmm. are my priority. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot, like there's a lot to navigate in that, like especially in youth ministry, to be honest, you get a kid that you get a call one night and there's a kid like in crisis, but you're staring at your 13 year old bawling his eyes out because 
you know, some kid was a jerk at school or something mm-hmm. like those are, they're hard decisions. Yeah, they are. And it's not that like one kid matters more than the right. other, but when you're trying to play like youth pastor and mom mm-hmm. all at the same time. So that is probably one of the greatest challenges for me right now that I just have to be very, very intentional mm-hmm. about. So, well, I think that's the word too, being intentional, like just not yeah. being, sweeping everything away or just saying, okay, oh, it's 9 30 and mommy really wants to go to bed, but you want to talk right now. Yes. Which by the way, if you don't have teenagers yet, you just need to prepare yourself <laughs> because when they want to talk is when you're going to bed. <laughs> Like every single, Mm -hmm. all the feels, heartfelt, Mm -hmm. whatever conversations do not begin in this house until after 930 at night (laughs) and I am brain dead. Mm -hmm. Um, But honestly, even though the next day, again, I feel like an old woman, it's worth it. Like those have been some of the most precious conversations Mm -hmm. with my middle schooler. So it just takes me three days to recover. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so switch gears a little. Tell me about what are your favorite ways to learn and grow? Favorite ways to learn and grow. I am a reader. Okay. I love to read. Um, And I'm going to answer a question I get a lot about that because I'm going to assume that somebody's thinking this. When do you have time to read? Mm -hmm. When you have kids Mm -hmm. and you work full time. So I'm going to throw it out there. Um, I will use some of my early mornings. I think I mentioned like I have a good two hour block. So I have my quiet time where I'm like in the word and journaling and praying. But then I usually try and leave like a little block of time Mm -hmm. and I'll pick up whatever book. I'm someone that is usually going through like three books at a time. Mm -hmm. And this is my method and there's no like rhyme or reason Mm -hmm. to it except my crazy brain. I do a chapter in each one. So like a chapter a day of three books and then over time and then some days I have more time and I'll and inevitably there's always a book that like totally sucks me in and I'm like I'm just gonna read like three more chapters okay so question for you though yes I have to have like I'm a reader as well like I love books but I have to have like a fiction book and a non-fiction book going at the same time like I love like a spiritual book but I also need like a fiction book too because like I can't like, I can't do heavy all the time. Like, I need to have, like, a little, like, storyline that's just, like, a fun story. Or even, it doesn't even have to be fun, but I just need a fiction book. So tell me, like, if you have three books going, are they all, like, super, like, spiritual? Tell me. Do you know this about me? Is this why you're asking? No, oh. I really don't. So tell me. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay, this is kind of embarrassing. Um, I, okay, I'm not really good with fiction books. Like, Sometimes I will make myself read one because I'm like, okay, I have to just like, I need to do something that is not like a (laughs) self-help spiritual leadership kind of book. Like it's, and this is not because I'm like a super smart, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I love leadership books. I love like ministry books. And so I'll have like, what was recently I was looking at my, I have like seven habits of highly effective. (laughs) person and then ordering your inner world by Gordon Mc- like this is my this is my reading I would be embarrassed to show you just because you're like wow I had no idea that you were such a nerd um occasionally though like um I reading based on your recommendation mm-hmm. Kate Merrick's book right now okay. which is like telling the story obviously of their family and I do, like, I do love those kind of books. I just can't do, like, the Harry Potter or, like, the romance novels. Okay, sometimes I can do, like, a cutesy Christian romance novel, (laughs) but very rarely. Um, I love, like, Brene Brown is one of my favorite Oh, girl, we could talk all day about Brene. I love her books. Um, And, but I also like, like, Tim Keller or John Piper. Like, I enjoy... Our that producer kind of will put a bunch of links in our show notes. Yeah, about I should these stop books. naming things. I know, because he's going to kill. Our producer will kill you later. I will say, I would just like to say that the fiction books I read are not Harry Potter and romance. Twilight? <laughs> Ew, no, I don't. I don't like Twilight either. I know, I know. I feel like I should say I read Twilight and I actually liked it. Whoa, well, I, I don't like science fiction. Is that science fiction? I don't even know. I don't. Really? Dracula? Wait, not Dracula. Dracula? No. Jen. Seriously. But I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is vampires, though. So oh, vampires. Close. Dracula. Yeah. Vampires. Same thing. Okay. I'm sorry. We totally just 
derailed the train. I'm coming back. We're bringing the train right back. Okay, so clearly you've got that down of how to learn and grow. So how are you caring for your body, mind, and soul right now? Yikes. Well, for my body, I'm going to physical therapy. It's <laughs> <laughs> good, good. And trying to do my exercises. Um, truthfully, I pre-injuries, which, and I say that with, uh, it's plural because mm-hmm. before I just had like a 12 month stint, man, where I maxed out the whole healthcare thing and just <laughs> went for it big. And before that I was like a gym rat. Mm-hmm. I loved going to the gym, lifting weights. Um, I can't do that right now. Like yeah. I will break and fall apart again. So I took a big step a little while ago, canceled my gym membership Mm. because I wasn't going. I didn't want to be among those hundreds of people, thousands of people that were paying the money and not going. So I actually canceled. Um, But really, I've been, it sounds lame, but I've been so intentional about doing the PT like exactly Mm -hmm. how they're telling Mm -hmm. me to, being faithful with the exercises, not pushing too hard, which seems obvious, but if you know me, Mm -hmm. that's like really hard for me Mm -hmm. to be okay this is I'm gonna use this wimpy band and this is all I'm gonna lift today Mm -hmm. because it's not lame I want you to know that like that's I just want to speak truth into your life like (laughs) that is what you should be doing and there are probably listeners who are like I can barely do my PT and it's super hard to be faithful to it so (sighs) you're not alone well I and it and I'll be honest if you are doing physical therapy right now I don't want to make it sound like it's not hard because it hurt. Like, it's so painful. That's why I have to be intentional is I have to be like, I'm getting better. Yep. And I distract myself with, like, the voice sometimes. I'll just, like, play a show to mm. make myself, like – because it takes a good half hour for me to get through everything. So okay. that's my that's my body. Um, mind and soul. So the reading, honestly, like, for my mind, I do a lot of that. I listen to podcasts. Yep. Um, I know that sounds like a shameless plug, but I really <laughs> do listen to podcasts. Um, and then I am somebody that nature just mm. is something that I need mm-hmm. on a right. So I really like, I love hiking in the woods. Okay. Um, and as dangerous as it has proven to be, <laughs> I like doing it by myself. Like I like being out there and no, I'm not afraid of bears or wolves eating me. Um, I think I grew up around the woods, so it doesn't okay. freak me out, but that's, it fills my soul. Like mm. if I'm having an overwhelming day of ministry, the, I long to just like mm. take Fenway and hike out in the woods, talk to God, listen to the birds, mm-hmm. pet the bears, <laughs> feed <good>. the wolves. It's <laughs> good. Okay, so I mean, your life is full. Yes. You're busy. You're working yes. full time. You have a family. So, what's something that you're not doing? Because we also don't want women to feel like, oh my goodness, I'm not doing all the things that she's doing. But we want women right. to feel like, Hey, not everybody is doing everything Hmm. because it's impossible. And a lot of times it seems like everybody's doing everything. Hmm. So what's something that you're not doing right now? Showering. No, Hmm. just kidding. (laughs) You smell it? (laughs) Um, No. So something that I'm not doing. um, So I mentioned one. I'm not going to the gym right now. That's Mm -hmm. not part of my routine, um, which for me actually does buy back a lot of my day because I love the gym. Um, I am not traveling and speaking a ton. Okay. Like I am doing little bits here and there, mm-hmm. but I have probably said no to more speaking opportunities than I have said yes this year. And that's been something for the last few years that I realized like I love it, mm-hmm. absolutely love it. But with everything else yeah. that I'm doing, like I can't be on the road every weekend. Mm-hmm. Like, um, my boss has been the most helpful for me drawing boundaries. And he always says, like, anytime you get asked to do something, don't just look at the date. Look mm. at the weeks leading up and the mm-hmm. weeks going out. And that's been helpful for me to know what are mm. the things I should not be doing because there's a thousand other things going on. So I would say those are probably the big ones for me. Is saying no to speaking an easy no or a hard no? Oh, so hard. Okay. Because I love it. Yeah. So uh, I'm someone like, beware. If you ask me to do something, like tell me to stop and think about it because I'm totally like, yeah, like let's go. And then look on the calendar and be like, oh, that's my anniversary trip. <laughs> my bad. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I'm definitely a yes person. Mm-hmm. I really, really struggle with that because I love, I'm like you, I love people. So right. I'm like, oh, go somewhere with people. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. So. Right, and the speaking is your jam, so yeah, no. It's yeah. good to hear it's a hard no. I like, it's it real It's real life. No. That's real life, absolutely. Yeah, because I'm not superwoman. Yeah. 
And I actually had to learn that. I really mm-hmm. tried. Mm-hmm. And then my cape didn't work and I crashed. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm about down to my last question. Sweet. Which is super fun. Um, what is the most superficial thing about you? Okay. I'll get real. Okay. Let's hear it. I just, here's the thing. I'm going to, before I confess this, mm-hmm. I just want everybody listening to know that I don't need your opinions and I don't want <laughs> articles mailed to me. I know the risks involved and I know it's bad, but every once in a while I just get tired of my pasty white skin and I go tanning. I know. Don't give me your judgmental look. I'm trying I'm trying to be Girl, real and vulnerable. Sometimes I go here. tanning too. What? It's okay. Nuh-uh. I know. <laughs> you didn't even share that in your interview. <laughs> I feel like my vulnerability led to your vulnerability. It did. The see, that's so okay. sweet of but us. But people hate it. I know they do. It's so, like you feel ashamed saying like, yeah, the tan's not real. But it makes mm-hmm. me feel like a million bucks when mm-hmm. I had just a little bit of color in my skin. Well, also, it gives you vitamin D. So we just say that to all the, <laughs> at least me. I'm like, yeah, it's for the vitamin D. Just kidding. I'm just being shallow and I like having a tan. <laughs> all right. We will go with that because this is your superficial answer. So I actually think that might, that might take the cake for the most superficial okay. thing. Well, so. it makes me love you more. So Yay. it's good. It's a good answer. It's a win. All right, ladies, thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. Hey Girl is up and booming and we are recording. And if you can, please subscribe on iTunes so you can catch all our episodes. Like us on social media, follow us. And we just want to encourage women right where you are doing your thing in your place to keep running after Jesus. Have a great day.